And now we can move to Dario Mazzilli. Here he, here he is, which I now briefly introduce. <clears throat> so Dario studied physics in Rome, and then he also had his PhD in Rome La Sapienza under the supervision of Professor Luciano Pietronero. Uh, and his thesis was on a model to forecast countries' growth on, from the economic point of view. And in this field, he collaborated also with the Joint Research Center of the European Commission as an external expert. Nowadays, he is a researcher at the Enrico Fermi Research Center, uh, which is in Rome. Uh, his field of research uh, is uh, economy in general, economic complexity more precisely. And today, uh, for us, he will give a seminar with the title Optimal Transport Problem in Complex Systems. So please, Dario, you can share your screen and start. Okay, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, so hello everyone. Thank you for having me and giving me the opportunity to present this work. So today I'm going to talk about optimal transport in complex system. Um, you may find this talk interesting if you work on bipartite system. So today I'm going to present some example about countries and products for international trade or ecological system from plants and pollinators, but I'm going to try to convince you that this problem can be framed in many other systems. If in your system you have some kind of optimization, so you have resource allocation, limited resources actually, uh, some cost for gain of preferences in this allocation, or if in the system that you work on, nestedness and diversification are considered very important property of your system, or if in general you work with network analysis on real network or reconstruction or something like that. So these are the main ingredients of this talk. But let me start from the beginning. Um, my field of expertise actually is not optimal transport, it's economic complexity. Uh, this line of research in Rome was started by Luciano Spedronero Group uh, 10 years ago. Uh, one of the main elements of the, of the work is this matrix. This is a binary matrix. Uh, that we call the country product matrix, each point in this matrix means that these countries produce this product. This comes from the export data. As you can see, it has a triangular shape. Uh, that means that it's nested. Nestedness means that the export basket of a country is a subset of the export basket of more diversified countries. And this, it is important in economics and ecological system as well, uh, because it is related to um, the resilience of the system uh, to external shock. Uh, one classic question in economic complexity is how to measure the technological level of the productive system of countries and how to measure the complexity of products, because here you can see that countries tend to produce everything they can given some technological level of the productive system, and there are some complex products that can be produced and exported by few countries, while some more simpler most simple product that can be exported by many countries. So how can we measure these two quantities? Well, the Channel Spedonero Group invented this algorithm. Uh, it was constructed heuristically just from the MCP matrix, where we have the fitness of countries and the complexity of product. Fitness of, of countries is just the sum over all the complexity of the product that are exported by the country, while the complexity of product is related to the least fitness country that exports that product. Uh, we use the fit, this is an iterative map that converges after a few steps, and we use fitness and complexity on a daily basis in our project and works. But this is just the starting point of this project, because one year ago, a colleague of us, Fabiano Morone, looked at this algorithm and he recognized the Syncorn algorithm. The Syncorn algorithm is, is much uh, older than fitness and complexity, and he use, it is used mostly in computer science and uh, um, another application about the matrix scaling. So it solves the matrix scaling. What is matrix scaling? Well, it's very simple. You have a matrix A whose entries are zero or positive value. You want to construct, for some reason, you want to construct a different matrix B with the same pattern of A, so with the same zero entries, but you want to change the non-zero entries, so you want to escape the matrix A, in order for B to satisfy two constraints. So you want that the sum of rows and columns are equal to two vectors that are given to the problem. 
This can be done easily by multiplying A by two vectors U and B. These two vectors can be found with the synchron algorithm. As you can see, if you recall the, um, the fitness and complexity algorithm, especially in the symmetric version, so if you, are, if you rewrite the fitness and complexity algorithm using J, that is the inverse of fitness, we can see that it has a symmetric um, form and it is very close to the synchron algorithm. Actually, there are some few details that change, but that doesn't change the result. So if you fit the two algorithms with the same matrix A or M, you will get the same result. So one year ago, we discovered that the fitness algorithm that we were using for years is actually the same of the synchron algorithm. This opened for us a door to different fields. The most interesting probably is the optimal transport. I'm going to show you in a moment what is the relationship between synchron algorithm and the optimal transport. But first, let me introduce what optimal transport is. So it's very simple. It's an optimization under some constraint. This original formulation was about moving stuff, so that's why it's called transport. So let's suppose you have n mines and n stock insights, and you want to move whatever you are digging in your mines, so for example, coal, to some warehouses. You have some constraints to the problem because um, you have two vectors, R and C. You have a limited um, extracted materials from your mines and limited stocking capacity for your warehouses. Uh, here, whatever I'm, I'm, I'm talking about is everything is balanced. So the sum of, uh, of R and C are the same. What you want to do is to move coal from the mines to the warehouses. So you want to find the matrix pi that tells you how much coal you move from X to Y. Y has to satisfy the two constraints. There are many pi's, but also you want to find a particular pi, so a particular way to move the coal in order to minimize the cost, because of course, moving uh, a new, uh, a unit of core from X to Y will depend on the distance, for example. So you will have different costs depending on the couple X and Y. So what you want to find is the pi that minimize the total cost of this transportation. The total cost is simply pi multiplied by phi. Okay, this is the original formulation of the optimal transport, but it can be reframed easily in many other systems. So for example, let's talk about the international trade that I showed you before, instead of mines, and warehouses, we may have countries and products. The two constraints can be the total resources the countries can, in, uh, can feed to the productive system. And the, um, the other vector C can be the market demand for, total pro for, uh, for the product. So how, how much is needed the product in the, interne in the international trade. So now we want to find pi that would mean it would be how countries allocate resources in order to produce product and in order to meet the market demand. So in this frame, instead of having a cost function, we can have a gain function that could be the unit price at which products are sold in the market. And of course, that would become a maximization of the total gain instead of the minimization of the total cost. So changing from mean to max doesn't change the property of the, of the solution. Uh, as you can see, we can easily reframe optimal transport for the international trade. In fact, what I'm trying to do here today is to convince you that optimal transport can be found in many complex systems because it only requires two common ingredients, that is the constraints and an optimization. Constraints are easy to find because every physical world, every physical system has limitation. And while a cost of gain or presence is function, uh, can be naturally integrated and found in many systems. For example, how you spend your free time, you have different activity that you can do, but you have limited time and the activities are limited uh, space, for example, gym or school or whatever. So the two ingredients are not that hard to, uh, to be found in many complex systems. So now let me show you how the synchronous algorithm, so the fitness algorithm is related to the optimal transport. Well, it's very simple. Optimal transport is hard to, the, the optimal solution is hard to find once the dimension of the matrix you are trying to, to find pi grow too much. So what, what you can do, uh, actually Marco Pituri showed 10 years ago that synchron can be a fast way to approximate the solution of the optimal transport by simply adding to the function that you want to minimize and maximize. Uh, entropic term that regularize your problem with an epsilon that at the end of the story you will set to zero. So now you have the Lagrangian problem with the 
entropic term, the two multipliers alpha and beta, the multiplier you're constrained, and the solution of this problem is given by this pi, that is simply a matrix K that is related, that is fixed, it is related to the cost function, so it is given to the problem, and the two vectors U and V. As you can see, this is kind of a matrix scaling. So U and V can be found by the synchron algorithm, you find U and V, and then you set epsilon to zero. So the limit that with epsilon that goes to zero is not always uh, well behaved, but we are going in, in fact to interpret the epsilon, the non-zero epsilon as the temperature of your system, because of course we cannot expect that real systems are perfectly optimized. But now let me tell you about uh, a very interesting property of the optimal pi of the solution of the optimal problem. This is an example that I borrowed from the uh, website of the package to solve optimal transport in Python. And um, here we have the two vectors, our two constraints, the cost matrix, what shape doesn't matter much. And here I show you the results. So this is the optimal pi given the constraint of the cost. As you can see, it's very interesting to see that this pi is not nested, it's not, there is not diversification here. In fact, it is a well-known property of the optimal pi, and this is carved in marble, that it is sparse. It only has n plus n minus one non-zero element, and actually it is a tree in the bipartite network. So our first claim in this project is, if there is indeed an optimization going on in your system, this is driving your system in a very peculiar structure. But now we have a problem. So one year ago, we discovered the, the fitness that uh, was constructed heuristically from the observation of a triangular shape or triangular matrix, and is trying to um, capture, to measure the, some sort of diversification of the system and some sort of messiness in some way. Uh, it's also a solution of the problem that would require a tree-like network structure. So you can see the conundrum here. And to solve this problem, we decided to take a step back. Because what I'm, show, what I'm showing you here is a binary structure, so a binary matrix from export, but we actually have the weighted matrix of export, so the matrix with dollars, with millions of dollars in the international trade. If we look at the distribution of the weight, and if, in fact, if we look at the biggest n plus n minus one links, that are the links predicted, the number of links predicted by the optimal transport, we can see that they are only 1% of the 16 edges in the matrix, but they account for 70% of the total trade. So it will, it will appear that um, the weighted matrix is much less dense than the binary matrix. And we explain that with our second claim that the binary matrix is in fact the structure of possibilities. Of course, more developed countries can produce every product because the capabilities in the productive system are very high, but when it comes to uh, invest to allocate resources, they are trying to optimize, they are trying to maximize the money they are getting from the international trade. So there is an optimization problem running onto the network of possibility, and that would explain why the weighted network is much uh, sparser. So I promise you some ecological system. We decided to apply this framework to ecological system because the fitness algorithm was in fact uh, related to some uh, plant and pollinator system um, by other scientists. So we went to Web of Life, that is an online database, it's completely free. You can find hundreds of system of plants and pollinator. Uh, here data are collected by direct observation of plants in a time window, they record every time uh, an insect piece visit a plant. For 34 of this system, there are frequencies of interaction, so they are weighted, and we decided to repeat this exercise, so we framed again our uh, optimal transport problem as insects that are trying to maximize whatever the, they are getting from the plant. The concern here would be the total time for, for insects, there would be the total time uh, they have to collect resources, and for plan, it would be the total pollen that a plant can produce. And we are saying that we don't have the, um, the pi, the pi matrix, the gain cost function, but what we are observing from this data is the pi matrix. So how insects allocate their time, so how are uh, they choosing plants? 
And uh, here the results, they are even more encouraging because the number of edges in the system are already a high percentage of the, um, actually the, 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 the edges of the OT, the OT1 transport is uh, a high percentage of the, the 15 edges. So it seems like already the, um, the ecological system are already very close to an optimal transport solution, even in the binary form. And when we look at the share, only one system is less than 70%, while many other systems are very close to the uh, optimal solution. So 90 or on a, almost, I think one is 100%, something like that. Uh, but now let me let me show you a visual exercise, and I want to try to convince you how um, an optimal solution that is a tree-like structure can appear as a nested structure with diversification and nestedness just by using a non-zero temperature. So I'm just going to make this visual exercise that is very simple. I take one of the data, one of the system that I showed you before for plants and pollinators. This is the real data. From this data, I just take the sum over columns and rows, so I obtain the two constraints of the problem. And just I use a dummy cost gain function phi, that is, in this case, this proportional to the ranking of the, the order of the, of the rows and columns, but actually, this shape doesn't matter much. And, uh, I, and I solve with these two, with these two uh, elements the optimal transport. This is the shape of the optimal pi, it is a tree. And uh, but now I can use the synchron algorithm. I can feed the algorithm with the very same element, but I'm not setting epsilon to zero. I just keep uh, non-zero temperature for the system. And as you can see, the solution provided by the synchron algorithm is kind of uh, triangular. It is nested actually, and it's also there is also some diversification going on here. So uh, our third claim in this project is that nestedness and diversification that you find in your system, in many complex systems, might just be the effect of some non-optimality in your system. Of course, they can still be very important, and the effect that, is, that are driving away, that are driving your system away from the optimal solution can be very important, but what we're saying is that we can uh, justify the observation of nestedness even in an optimal transport framework. Of course, we need more proof to say that there is actually an optimal transport in the form that I presented today in your system. Uh, that is what we are doing now in these days. So we are trying to find a way, and we are very close to that, to measure the temperature in your system. So you give us a parametrics, then your data, and we can try to look at some structure in your data, for example, the maximum spanning tree or the biggest n plus n minus one um, edges. And we can tell you the temperature of your system, how far you are from an optimal solution. If you, if we can estimate, of course, the, um, the, the phi matrix, the, the preferences matrix. In fact, that would be a very interesting problem to solve how to reconstruct the phi matrix given your, given the, the, the pi, the optimal pi on the real data. A second thing that we really need to enhance our claims is Null model. So we need null model uh, to to rule out some randomness uh, and how we can say that whatever we are observing is really an optimal transport structure with a given temperature instead of just some random effect. So we already have a null model that we are going to use now. I don't have results for that to show you, but uh, we already I can anticipate something. Um, this the bipartite weighted configuration model, and it takes into account only one of the ingredients of the optimal transport because it fixed the constraints. So this model, this null model fixed the total, the sum of rows and columns, and then it randomized everything else. We already know that this, uh, this model uh, gives you a much denser matrix than the real data that usually uh, you're trying to reconstruct or to, or to analyze with this model. And we may try to come up with some null model that takes into account the other ingredient, but not the constraint. So we can try to find something that uses the cost function, but not the constraints. I don't know if that actually makes sense because as I said, any physical real system has some limitation, but we can try to come up with some idea on that. And uh, so here I come with our uh, fourth 
claim that is researcher in this system, complex system and network system, even in physics, in some fields, cannot ignore uh, this, this framework, optimal transport. To our knowledge, it is largely unknown to these communities, but I hope I convince you that it is indeed very easy to find uh, an optimization of this kind in many systems, and it cannot be known because it is driving the system to a very peculiar structure that is a tree in a bipartite network, but it, it does, it, it's not limited to bipartite system. And also, if you want to, I don't know, reconstruct data or analyze some fine structure in, in your network, you need to know that there is a, an optimization that is driving your system and is changing the dynamic of your system to a very peculiar state. So I would like you to spread the word to colleagues and other researchers that are work on some complex system that you might recognize in, in this work. And uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dario. Uh, there are questions. I see some raised hands. It seems to me that we have Amos first. So yes. Amos. Yeah. Very nice uh, talk, Dario. Uh, we were also showing that uh, for uh, the plant and pollinator system, uh, if we ask what is the network that allows for uh, the population of uh, each species to be as, as large as possible, we had uh, this optimization process on the network and we found that at the end, the nested one is the one that guaranteed that each species is the, the most happy. And again, is an optimization. So we are not uh, using uh, <coughs> the, the, the optimal transport as you did, but uh, again, we use uh, an optimization process uh, in order to choose uh, what is the network uh, that guarantee that each piece is as happy as possible. Yeah, so I'm, uh, thank you. For the comment, um, I'm not an expert on ecological systems, so this is actually my first work using this data. Um, but they are trying, what we are trying to do is kind of try to understand if um, nestedness, of course, is important. And uh, we, we had many papers also that are, uh, are criticizing the, the nestedness because in many papers that I, that I read about the ecological system, they, they try to measure the nestedness and also to um, there is no model for nestedness, right? Because you see some in any in any data you you can find you will some you will measure some nestedness and then you you have to decide if that is meaningful or not. Uh, so I, I don't know that the optimization that you are telling me, um, but what what we are trying to say here is that we the, the way the structure is usually not that nested. There is a definition of weighted nestedness. I found some work about the nestedness or weighted network, and the paper that I, that I saw was, they were always saying that uh, the binary structure is always much more nested, so the significance of the nestedness of the binary structure is higher than what you find when you take into account the weight of the, of the, of the system for, for, for the plants and pollinator system. Uh, the, the frequencies of interaction. Uh, I don't know what, what, what's your opinion on that. Uh, I, I cannot hear you. Or, uh, no. Almost, no. Yes, I agree with you that there are many uh, paper criticizing uh, the concept of nestedness, uh, the way in which it is defined and so on. Other, uh, other have explained that the, the, the method as a result of uh, more important uh, biological mechanism. And so uh, I don't know how long it can take uh, to make uh, a, a comment that uh, taking into account uh, all this. Uh, maybe we can discuss uh, uh, separately on this. Uh, I can send you some paper that uh, and we can and we can. Uh, sure, sure. Thank you. Okay, mm. I don't see other raised hands. Maybe I have a one final but very silly question. Is in the case of economy, you showed that triangular matrix, binary matrix, 
So but, um, probably you have the data also for, for the weighted matrix. Uh, is it really nested? I mean, if, if you produce something, but you produce just one piece, it's like not producing. Yeah, yeah, I, I do understand your question. Um, so the nested matrix, um, there is a way to filter the noise from the export to obtain the nested matrix. So you rescale the export by dividing, uh, it is called the RCA, the competitive advantage. So you rescale the, the export value by the size of the counties of the, uh, of the export and the size of the product demand. So it is kind of, you are taking away the, the constraints of the optimal transport and the size of product and country. And then you confront the, the share that product represents for that country as with the share of that product for the entire world. And you decide that if that ratio is bigger than one, you put the, the, the element uh, one in, in this metric. So what I'm saying is that um, we filter the, the noise and the very small value of export in order to construct mm -hmm. this matrix, of course. And uh, we have the export data, as you were saying, and the export data are actually much less, um, uh, of course, if you take just uh, all the data, all the exports that are greater than zero is denser, but if you look at the distribution of the weight, they are very concentrated in very few, in very few um, trades. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, seems not. So if not, let's thank the speakers again. Thank you. And uh, I think we can close the session and we will meet uh, uh, at the next uh, seminar, which will be announced on the web. Thank you very much to everyone, to Thanks. the speakers and thank you to everyone. Ciao a tutti.